You finally set up a brokerage account and now you're ready to start trading. The only problem is you have no idea which stock to choose was considered a good stock or a bad stock. Don't worry. I'm going to show you my way of researching a stock prior to spending your hard earned money. My name is Jalen. I'm not a financial advisor and the information that I am providing in this video is strictly for educational purposes only. So go ahead and grab a pen and paper because I'm going to show you how to determine if the stock is worth your money. So let's go. Lately, a lot of people have been asking me for my opinion regarding stocks that they've either purchased or were looking into purchasing. I always respond by asking, what are you or were you interested in that stock? And 90% of the time they respond by saying, well, the price was cheap. Me and my friend use those products a lot, so I want to buy it. Or my favorite one, my mama's cousin's boyfriend's baby sister's husband's nephew is into stocks and he said I should buy it. Before buying a stock, you have to research it or else it's just straight speculation. That means you're just going off of hope. You're basically gambling. Buying a stock without researching it first is like buying a used car without test driving it first. I mean, the price might look mighty nice, but that price is going to hit different once you find out it's worth a lot less due to a previous accident. Most investors do what they call a fundamental analysis before purchasing a stock. A fundamental analysis isn't as intimidating as it sounds. It's a way for you to determine whether the stock's current value reflects its true value. The price you see on TV or the internet is somewhat like a facade. The current price is a combination of the true value along with rumors, media hype, politics, seasonal business cycles, disappointing earnings, bad news, good news, and unexpected events like the coronavirus. As an investor or a trader, you should conduct a fundamental analysis to look past all of the distractions and focus on the real value of the stock. A fundamental analysis consists of looking at the company's finances, the experience of their leadership team, uh, how the company generates revenue, and if the company have any competition. Investors use all of these factors along with others to evaluate and to determine if the stock is worth the buy or if it's time to sell. The textbook way to complete a Fundamental analysis is to review the company's annual report known as the company's 10K. The 10K is an annual form that every public company has to file annually. And I can't lie, it's a very complex report, but it gives you a full explanation about the company. I will not cover how to review an annual report on this video, but I will at a later date. Personally, I do a quick fundamental analysis using Yahoo Finance. For this lesson, I'm gonna use American Airlines as an example. Its ticker symbol is A-A-L. So first go to www.finance.yahoo.com and enter American Airlines ticker symbol in the search box on the top. You will see a page showing all of the information pertaining to American Airlines. You can see there are a few sections, which include summary, chart, conversations, statistics, historical data, profile, financials, analysis, options, holders, and sustainability. You should be in the summary tab right now. Let's just say that you've never heard of American Airlines and you have no idea what it is or how it makes money. So you need some basic information about the company, right? Well, click on the profile tab on top of the chart and you will see some basic information about the company. Information like what sector it's in, the type of industry it's in, how many full-time employees it has, and the names of the key executives along with their salary. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see the description of the company as well. If you need more detailed information, you can always Google, or like I mentioned earlier, the answer will definitely be in the company's 10K, their annual report. Now click on the summary tab. I always look at the 52 week range. This tells me the lowest price and the highest price that the stock has been within the last year. It tells me that the lowest that this stock has been within the last year was $10.01 and the highest was $35.24. Then I look at the days range to view the prices that it fluctuated during the last market day. The stock fluctuated between $13.91 
and $15.21. Although the price is really close to its 52 week low, I have to take into consideration the recent outbreak of the coronavirus, which hit the economy really hard. Then I look at the volume. The volume tells you the emotional excitement in a stock. Essentially, it's telling you how many people traded or sold that stock during that day. As a general rule of thumb, you do not want to mess with any stock with less than a million in average of volume. Quite honestly, an average volume above 20 million is more ideal. Investors trade American Airline at an average volume of 27,547,456 per day. Then I'm looking at the market cap, which is short for market capitalization. It's a total size of the company in the stock market and it represents how many people own shares of that stock. Next, the P.E. ratio stands for price to earnings ratio. It's an extremely useful tool to determine the true value of a stock and I'll cover that later in the video. Next, we have the dividend and the yield percentage. This tells us how much dividends you will receive per share. The yield tells me the percentage of a company's share price that the dividend will turn out to be. Then I scroll down and read the current news about the company. Within the same section, I review the earnings chart to see if they met their previous earnings goal. Now remember, companies release an earnings report every three months and it's like a summarized report card. They tell you if they met their financial goal and their guidance for the next three months. As you can see, American Airlines met all of their quarterly goals during the last fiscal year. You can also view the downgrades and upgrades given by financial analysts from various financial institutions. Now let's click on the chart tab. Charts provide a lot of information about the stock. In the eyes of a trader, a chart tells you a unique story. It tells you when the majority of the traders were optimistic, that's when it's going up, or pessimistic, scared, that's when it's going down. Right on the top of the actual chart, you see that the chart can range from one day all the way to the max, which will go all the way back to the day it went public in the stock market. While looking at the chart, click on the five year tab and let's take a look at the historical trend. Is it going up? Were there any massive dips? Or was it pretty much stagnant? As you can see, American Airlines stock has been all over the place with no kind of consistency. And there was a slow downward trend since January of 2018, and then it dropped significantly this past February due to the coronavirus. Now click on the one year chart to see the trend for the past year. Ask yourself the same questions. If you see any significant movement, document the time that it either dipped or spiked so that you can find a reason why on the internet or by the company's old annual report. For example, in this one year chart, I was curious to know what caused the stock to go down on July 25th. I researched on Google and found out that American Airlines released their earnings report on January 25th before the market opened. Although they had a great earnings report and a positive outlook on the following three months, there was a huge uncertainty among investors regarding the grounding of Boeing's 737 MAX fleet due to a few crashes that occurred with that model aircraft. Turns out that actually put a dent on the entire airline industry during that time. Moving forward, now click on the six months and then the one month and do the same exact thing for both. After viewing each chart, you should have a pretty good view on the historical trend of that stock. In regards to American Airlines, it's been a choppy flow within the last five years. It's been on a downward trend since January of 2018. Now, click on the statistics tab. Let's take a closer look at each subsection and let's cover what the numbers actually mean. The valuation measures section. This subsection is one of the most important, if not the most important, to look at. The numbers you see here can help you decide on how much the stock is really worth based on how well the company does in its business. So allow me to show you the ones I pay attention to. Market cap intraday. Market capitalization measures the total value of a company by looking at the total value of all of its outstanding shares. Outstanding shares meaning the amount of the company's stock that's currently held by investors like you and I. So why is this information important? Write this down. Companies are normally divided into three categories according to market cap, large cap, mid-sized cap, and small cap. You'll hear these terms often when trading. 
Large cap companies usually have a market cap of 10 billion and up. Mid cap companies usually have a market cap of 2 billion to 10 billion. And small cap companies have a market cap of less than $2 billion. Understanding which market cap the company falls under will help you to compare companies effectively. And once you get serious, you can better diversify your account. The market cap for American Airlines is currently $6.6 billion, which marks it as a mid cap compared to the competitor Delta Airlines, which has a market cap of $20 billion. Number two, enterprise value. Enterprise value is the amount that a person or a company would have to pay if they wanted to buy American Airlines, if it was for sale. This sale would also include the company's debt. Basically, the enterprise value is the market cap along with the company's debt. For American Airlines, this number is $36.2 billion. So why do you need to know this? Write this down. A company with more cash than debt will have an enterprise value less than its market capitalization. A company with more debt than cash will have an enterprise value greater than its market capitalization. So what does that say about American Airlines? Total debt equity. The debt equity ratio measures the company's financial leverage. How much the company uses debt to pay for operations. Write this down. When debt is the primary way a company finances its business, it's considered highly leveraged. If it's highly leveraged, the debt to equity ratio tends to be higher. Why is this important? Because this indicates the stability of a company and its ability to raise additional capital to grow. A very high number suggests high risk in meeting financial obligations and higher risk to shareholders. It pretty much means that the business might not be able to produce enough money to repay its debt. If a debt to equity ratio is lower, like closer to zero, this often means that the business hasn't relied on borrowing to finance operations. This isn't necessarily a good thing. From our point of view as traders, we'd be hesitant to invest in a company with a very, very low ratio because the business isn't realizing the potential profit it can make by borrowing and increasing operations. Here's a rule of thumb that I go by. The debt to equity ratio should not be above two or 2.0 or 200% unless the company is a capital intensive industry like the financial and manufacturing industry that have higher ratios, which is normally greater than two. A good debt to equity ratio is around one to 1.5. But keep in mind that the debt to equity ratio will vary across industries because different type of businesses require different levels of debt and capital. Hopefully I didn't confuse you. The debt equity ratio for American Airlines says not applicable in Yahoo Finance, which is a red flag to me. So I Googled American Airlines current debt to equity ratio and found out that surprisingly, it's negative 283. A negative debt to equity ratio occurs when the company's debt are greater than the return on investment. The company has a negative net worth. Companies with a negative debt to equity ratio may be seen as risky to investors because this debt is seen as a sign of financial instability. Levered free cash flow. This number tells us how much cash the company has left after paying all its financial obligations. Generally speaking, a positive levered free cash flow is a good sign, especially during tough times like the one we're currently experiencing. However, a negative free cash flow could mean that the company has made large capital investments, especially new companies. In regard to American Airlines, their levered free cash flow is $17.74 million. P.E. ratio. Let's go back to the summary tab and take a look at the P.E. ratio. P.E. stands for price earning ratio. I use it to determine if the stock is overvalued or undervalued. Earlier, I mentioned that the stock price that you see on the internet or on news is somewhat of a facade that incorporates public sentiments along with good, bad, and unexpected news. The P.E. ratio is the share price divided by the annual earnings per share. But don't worry, although it's good to know, you can simply Google a company's P.E. ratio or just pull it from Yahoo Finance. If you want to learn how to calculate the P.E. ratio, the information can be found on Investopedia. The P.E. ratio is used to compare valuation between two or more companies within the same industry or sector to determine which one is the best value for your money. A lot of people will make the mistake of comparing P.E. ratios between different sector or industries. Write this down. 
A high P.E. ratio means that investors have a high expectation about future growth, while a low P.E. ratio means that they have low expectations about future growth. A low P.E. ratio can also mean that it's a bargain buy. The P.E. ratio will not work on a company that's losing money. They will have a negative P.E. ratio or no P.E. ratio at all. A negative P.E. ratio is a really bad sign, a red flag. If you do not remember anything else from this video, this is the one thing you can use to make a better decision about purchasing the stock. So from what we researched, is American Airline a good investment? Well, here's what I gather about American Airline during this lesson. After viewing the charts, American Airline has been on a continuous down slope since January of 2018. I compared the P.E. ratio of American Airline to Delta, United Continental Holdings, Southwest Airlines, and JetBlue Airways. And American Airlines has the second lowest P.E. ratio. This could mean that it's better value. However, I think investors have a low expectation for the stock to grow. The levered free cash flow is in the negative. The debt to equity ratio is negative, which indicates that the company may not be able to pay its debts. So in conclusion, in my humble opinion, American Airlines will be a risky investment. Members, do you have a particular way to research the stocks before buying them? If so, I'd love to hear your method. Please comment below.